Hi everyone! This video is an introduction to mitochondria and chloroplasts. We're going to learn much more about these organelles in chapters 6 and 7, so this video just provides a very general overview of the structure and function of each one. So if you take a look at this cell here, you can see it has mitochondrion over here, shown in orange, which is usually the case, and a chloroplast shown here in green, and that will also generally be shown in green. On this slide, we'll go through some general characteristics that mitochondria and chloroplasts both have in common. So their function for each one has to do with energy transformation. Both of these organelles are involved in converting energy from one form to another. In terms of their structure, they both include multiple layers of membrane filled with enzymes, and we'll go into the specifics of that in a couple of chapters. And then both of them are also found in eukaryotic cells only, so you won't see either of these in prokaryotes. So let's take a closer look at each one. We'll start with mitochondria. Mitochondria are generally usually depicted as an orangey bean-shaped structure, kind of like this with some squiggles inside, that's the general structure. And mitochondria are found in all eukaryotic cells, so animals, plants, fungi, and protists, depending on how you classify them, all of those cells would have mitochondria. The specific function of mitochondria is to convert chemical energy, energy that you would get from food, into an energy form, a special molecule known as ATP. And we're going to learn more about ATP, not in this chapter, but a little bit further down the road. This process of converting chemical energy into ATP is known as cellular respiration. And this is a really important process that your cells need for every second that they're alive. So you might have heard mitochondria referred to as the powerhouse of the cell, and that is absolutely true. They are constantly providing energy for everything that your cells need to do. If we take a closer look at the structure of mitochondria, they have two layers of membrane. Here you can see in this diagram, there's sort of an outer shell layer here, and then it's cut away to reveal the inside. So that outer shell is the outer membrane, and the inner one is, of course, the inner membrane. And you can see that inner membrane is really highly folded. There's a lot of folds in there. And if we could see it under the microscope, you'd also see a lot of folding in there, creating all those squiggles. And we'll talk about the function of those folds later. Another thing to know about mitochondria is not only are they shown as being orangey in the book, they actually do appear orangey brown. So when we take tissue samples that have a lot of mitochondria, certain tissues have more mitochondria than others, those tissues actually tend to have a slightly orangey brown color. So this is one of the organelles that actually does have the color that the textbook shows. What about chloroplasts? Well, chloroplasts are found in plant cells only. You will not find these in animal cells, only in plants. And their job is to convert sunlight energy into chemical energy. And that chemical energy is generally in the form of sugars. So this is a process you've heard of before. It is photosynthesis. In terms of their structure, chloroplasts have three layers of membrane. If we take a look at this chloroplast here, you'll see that there's a layer on the outside. That's the outer membrane. There's another layer of membrane inside of that, the inner membrane. And then even further on the inside, there are these little green structures here that also have another membrane around them. And you don't need to know their name quite yet. We'll get to that in chapter seven. But there are those three layers of membrane within a chloroplast. And they are actually green. So if you look at plant cells under the microscope, such as these cells here, you'll see these little green blobs inside. And each one of those is an individual chloroplast. So mitochondria and chloroplasts are pretty special organelles. And we think they also have a kind of special origin. We think they used to be free-living prokaryotes. So unlike the other organelles in your cells, like the Raphiar and the Golgi, we think they actually came from a different source, that they used to be independent cells that got engulfed by a larger prokaryotic cell. So if you look at this diagram here, this represents a larger prokaryotic cell that may have been a precursor to modern eukaryotic cells. And we think what happened is that at some point, this larger cell engulfed a smaller cell, maybe an energy converting bacterium. And instead of digesting it, fusing it with a lysosome and breaking it down for food, for some reason, whether it was an error or we don't even know what, it just persisted in there and it survived and it kept doing its thing and converting energy. And that ended up working out really well for both of them. The larger cell got the extra energy, the smaller cell got protection. And because it worked out well, 
they kept living together. And so they survived and kept living cooperatively and passed that pattern down for many, many, many generations until we got something like a, a modern eukaryotic cell that has mitochondria in it. Those mitochondria being the descendants of that original small cell that got engulfed. And we think something similar happened for chloroplasts, where a photosynthetic bacterium got engulfed by a larger cell. For whatever reason, it didn't get broken down for food. It survived in there and persisted and then kept getting passed down until we ended up with a modern photosynthetic eukaryotic cell such as this. This process by which a smaller cell would have gotten engulfed and then ended up living symbiotically inside a larger cell is known as endosymbiosis. So endo means inside, symbiosis means living together, and we think this is where mitochondria and chloroplasts came from. Now why do we think this? We have a few pieces of evidence that support this. So among those are the facts that both mitochondria and chloroplasts have their own DNA and their own ribosomes. Now that's kind of weird. There are these little things living inside your cell that have their own DNA and ribosomes separate from the DNA and ribosomes that code for the rest of you. And they're also more similar to prokaryotic DNA and ribosomes than they are to the rest of your DNA and ribosomes. So that hints at some sort of different origin. Also, both mitochondria and chloroplasts have two or more layers of membrane. And that's a little bit unusual for your organelles, and we think that might be because of that original engulfing process when they came into the cell and got surrounded by membrane when they became engulfed in that original food vacuole. So that might explain the extra membrane. Another thing that they both do is they both reproduce on their own, independent of the cell that they're living in. So with all those things, having their own DNA, having that extra membrane reproducing on their own, that suggests that they may have been independent originally and are now just living cooperatively with your cells. So to review, mitochondria and chloroplasts are both involved in energy transformations in cells. Mitochondria are found in all eukaryotic cells, so we'll see it here in the animal cell and the plant cell, but chloroplasts are found only in plant cells. You'll learn much more about both of these organelles when we study the processes of cellular respiration and photosynthesis in more detail in chapters 6 and 7. So that's it for now. Until next time, take care of yourself, take care of each other.